Hello everyone and welcome back. And today we are looking at the ASWG 08 Gundam Barbatos. AKA Gundam Barbatos from Iron Blooded Orphans. And this model kit is so fun. <laughs> A little annoying in some places, I'll get to that in a second, and that is why I actually have my tweezers here. Um, but this is just some of the stuff like that he comes with. He comes with this big ass rifle cannon, this Gauss rifle, Gauss, Gauss, Gauss rifle, which can be collapsed up if you pull out the cannon here, and then it just slides around, slide it back. And it just sits in place, like so. And that is perfect. It's a little up clip here. See, so yeah, you can also extend the actual rifle arm itself. Simple details. I put the Tekadun stickers here. And the, uh, sorry, it is a 300 millimeter smooth bore gun. My apologies. It is right here. Uh, the sticker that says it is just right here. And then just a couple of... Uh, oh, and this here is actually a 40 millimeter machine gun. So you got a 300 millimeter bore, bore gun. And then a machine gun on, on the bottom. That's a lot of power. <laughs> this can do a lot of damage. And then you have the weapon that the Barbatos is, you know... Known for the crazy ass Mace of Doom. You can extend, you can kind of, I already have it, but you can extend the, uh, the spike here to make it even more badass. It's badass. You can get him to hold it. Oh, I, yep, right. So I thought I could, but you can't. So take off the hand. It's just in three pegs here on the, uh, on the knuckle right here and then you stick this in stick it in maybe I'm having the wrong I can never get this to stick and quite honestly it's a little heavy for the um, for the hand to hold so that's a little unfortunate but you know you can kind of get it to just Kinda, sorta. I don't know. No, you can't. Never mind. I am lying to the peoples because that is what I do. I do the lying. But yeah, this is mainly for the the cannon, and then he also comes with his katana, and it's a very nice katana. You know, not nothing. I I do kind of wish um, I had the painting skills to paint this guy's like the um. The sword here, just a pure silver, just because I think that would pop amazingly on this model kit. Um, whoop. Some small things, uh, the feet are a little schwonky, just the way that, you know, the feet are designed. So, you know, they're a little, they're a little wonky in terms of, you know, stability, but when you get them, you know, stabilized, they are really really solid and quite i built this guy a while ago so i'm just kind of going off you know base memory the memory of building this thing it was so fun and intricate it felt like i was actually you know properly building a robot like uh, a working robot with the amount of interior design and the gears and everything um hell even the the amount of hydraulics on this model kit like you you get a regular model kit. This isn't a regular model kit, but you know, it's something. Uh, my entry grade RX-78 II Gundam. OG Daddy Gun. The only OG Daddy Gundam I got. My other uh, OGs are all Zakubis. Zig Zeon, my friends. Zig Zeon. <laughs> um... But yeah, and like the don't worry about the scaling here. Uh this guy is 144, this is 1100. Um So you know it's still pretty damn big. Um 
But the amount of added mechanical detailing just to the Barbatos alone, the way that the arms are sculpted, you can see the hydraulics and the arms, the uh, the tubing here, just the way that like you also have some of the tubing here and the hydraulics here at the back of the foot as well. Just to show like the, the pivoting, then you have the actual like ball socket here for the foot. All they they when they designed the Gundams and all of the um all of the mecha for IBO, they went ham on the robot designs. Like they did amazing jobs. And that is an like quite honestly, for any of those who haven't seen IBO watch it it's great it's it's a Gundam anime so it's gonna be sad um just warning you there but you stay on um it's a really good anime it's so lively and fun the characters are crazy and just the storyline Ooh, I I actually haven't gone back for a second rewatch just because the I'm still not over the first time watching this the series and just the pain <laughs> The pain hurts. Um, yeah, you can kind of see like just where they were going for this uh, this mecha style of uh, fighting, because his the legs themselves are very are almost digitigrade in the way that I don't know. Actually, I'm sorry. That it's just the the way that the armor curves down. It makes it look more digitigrade than the Barbatos actually is. Barbatos Lupus, however, I'm pretty sure would would have definitely benefited from a um, a digitigrade leg, I think. And that is a 1-100 I'd love to get. Is the Gundam Barbatos uh, Lupus Rex. The final form of this beautiful thing right here. And maybe they <laughs> fixed these parts. Because these... um. These hydraulics here on the uh, on the bottom of the chest, they are notorious for coming loose and falling out. Like I spent five minutes before I even um, started recording, just fiddling with these to make sure that they were in place and they were snug. Um, but that that is kind of enough talking there. Uh, as you can see, for the design, it's very much just you know a Gundam. He's white. A uh, little bit of red, just as a, a differentiator. Lots of yellow coming in on certain spots here. And the blue on the chest with yellow for the vents here. Very much a an uptake on Granddaddy Gundam here. Who is currently unpainted because I don't paint. They even kind of match the, uh, the style of the crotch a wee bit. Uh, with the main white and then the red here for the center. Um, and a lot of the, a lot of the clear parts here, like for the, the shins here and on the shoulders, it looks so nice and it's, it's very vivid and it sticks out to you as like, I, I kind of wish I had the, um, the version where these things light, uh, like lit up because seeing the, the power coming from the shoulders and the legs, that would, it, it, it'd be terrifying and it so cool and mesmerizing um and i just ripped off barbie's hands sorry dude um but yeah just you the style of the gundam itself is a lot more menacing too in terms of the way that they designed it it's a lot more kind of villainous for um for the, like the the hero mobile suit, and that I think is by design. It's meant to look in that beginning stages of becoming feral. Uh, spoilers here, so uh, fair warning for those of you who have not seen IBO. I'm going to start a wee bit of a spoiler. When you're getting into the fight of Mikazuki and the uh, um. In Tekadon versus Gallarhorn, you see in like the the first episode the style of fighting that Mikazuki has. It's a lot more hand to hand combat, but he's also utilizing ranged weapons. As the series goes on, however, the character and hell even 
the Gundam itself, Barbatos gets a lot more bestial. Like they they actually do a very good job showing the uh, the, the fall from grace that the Gundam and that this Gundam and Tekodan themselves fall to. Like th this is just I think this is the uh, the fifth form. Uh, I think this is number five in, uh, like for Gundam Barbatos, or maybe I am wrong. Um, I'm honestly not a hundred percent sure. But the Gundam Barbatos itself goes through multiple changes throughout the um, throughout the series, and it starts off a medium kind of ranged um, jack of all trades type mobile suit, and then. As Mikazuki or Mikazuki or however you say his name, I'm just going to stick with the English pronunciation, uh, Mikazuki. As his fighting style develops more and more into what it's known for, you see their, the claws on Barbatos' feet become larger and more pronounced to give it that grip into the earth. Um, the way that the arms are angled and they have more um like much more of a spike to it the uh the forearms themselves become a little bit less armored than they even are now and that's all by design as mikazuki or mikazuki or again however you say it i'm gonna be switching back and forth becomes a lot more bestial in this fighting style and they show that with the way that even after he loses the this thing after he loses his sword, the gun, he goes at it with the claws and the tail and just the entirety of the mecha itself becomes a demon. And that's, I, I love just how they showed the, the fall and the, the hubris of certain characters. Even, even though, like, I, I know they were buying time, but still, like, it's just it's one of those things where it's it's crazy. <laughs> it's it's just crazy to think and just the way that they they made this like the the arms uh themselves like the the hinge itself is here. But you also have the piston coming out uh here and then there's a couple extra wide like you there's the the tension and um recoil from this um this hose here and that's really cool so it shrinks up as you're moving the arm forward and then gets more lack uh lax as the uh as the arm relaxes you stop that and as you can see like the thighs themselves are huge compared to the arms um hell even the bloody spine of this beast is friggin tiny as all hell he has a waist everybody kind of wants well, that a lot of people will be jealous of. Um, I myself am one of them. I, I kind of, not to that extent. I may a, a little bit, you know, wider, maybe about here. But you know, still like that. That is a very thin, very. Yeah, he, he almost looks like he's um, like the top half is just hovering above the legs. And I think that's what they were going for, like, with the design here. They wanted it to look like the top half was just kind of hovering over the legs. And just, it, it's... It's so... Cool. That I, that's really all I can say. It's just... It's really freaking cool. And the head itself is... Like, even at this point... Is still very much... A Gundam head, even though it's still pretty, like, it's definitely far and away from this guy. But, like, this is such a very, I'm gonna, actually, oh, right, I forgot, I couldn't, right. And, yeah, okay, we're just gonna leave that there, and, ay, 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 ay. Do not know where the red cheek went. Oh, crab apples. 
And just like that, I lost it. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. Oh well. Um. Yeah, that that I, I yeah <laughs> I uh, I know I didn't really go into a lot of the articulation and stuff. A lot of the joints on this guy are, as you can see, either extremely loose or very very tight. Um. So I did I didn't want to really you know play around with them too much. Um. But I, I just, I, I love Gundam. I love the style, the, the way that everything kind of works together. Hell, so, some of them, a lot of the time, and the very large irony of Gundam is how it itself is anti-war. It's a very anti-war type of show. And they do a very good job of showing, oh, hey... This is bad. Look at what we're putting our pilots through. This is what our soldiers go through during times of war. But on the flip side of that, they give us really cool friggin' Gundam mechs that I'd love to pilot. It's... I, I understand the message, and I love the message of... Uh, actually, you know what? Instead of me bringing it down, uh, breaking it down... There's a YouTuber named Boofire101, 161, something like that. Um, just search up Boofire. Um, and he goes through a lot of really interesting, the, the, um, the make, like some of the makings of some of the, uh, of the Gundam animes, uh, the way that they were, you know, initially designed to be, um, and just given some extra context with a lot of really cool visuals. He actually did one for IBO, so I, I would highly recommend taking a look at um, at his at his uh, his YouTube videos because he's really really awesome. Um, but yeah, that that's really all I have to say about Gundam Barbatos, and I hope you're ready because tomorrow. We're taking a look at the, one of the last, yeah, sorry, no, ah, technically one of the last mobile suits the Red Comet ever piloted during UC. And I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow for that one. Have a good rest of your night, everybody. And I just want to put a second, a, a couple minutes ago, I said Zeke Zeon. For those of you who do not watch Gundam at all. Zeke Zeon is just how the Zeon forces, you know, do their, you know, are like, uh, it, it's essentially a hail, but for, you know, Zeon, it's, <laughs> I'm not a Zeon fan. I just really like some of their mobile suits. Hell, the Zaku is like one of my favorites. Um, the, uh. I'm much more of like a, a U, a United Nation or the uh, the Federation kind of fan. The Nemo is really cute. Um, I love the uh, the GN or not not the GN. The uh, well, I mean, I love Granddaddy Gundam. I love the RX seventy eight too, but that's like that's obvious. Um, yeah, that, that's enough of me rambling. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you all tomorrow when we review one of Char Aznable's... Char? Char? The Red Comet's final mobile suit. Have a wonderful rest of your day, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!